With both the Summer Game Fest and E3 behind us and no sign of Crimson Desert, what's next for the upcoming open world action adventure from Pearl Abyss? What is happening with the upcoming winter release and where do we go from here? Honestly, there's not that much, but in this video I'll be covering everything that I could find from the past month to give us some idea of when we could hear more. Hey everyone, it's OSK, and today I wanted to give you guys an update on Crimson Desert and where the game is at this point in time. In this video, I'll be giving a very brief recap of all the recent news we've received from Pearl Abyss in relation to Crimson Desert, when we can expect to hear some more substantive news, and what the game could possibly bring to us on a variety of gameplay topics that I've touched in the past, but want to reiterate now that we're getting closer to the game's release. Now, if you're new to the channel or to Crimson Desert and you'd like to get caught up on everything, I do have a playlist of videos that I've made on Crimson Desert that I'll link in the card to the top right of your screen. And lastly, if you do enjoy this sort of video and my coverage of Crimson Desert, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And with that out of the way, let's get into this. Starting off with a brief recap of some more recent news for Pearl Abyss in Crimson Desert, the biggest piece of news has to be the recent expansion of offices in Europe and North America for some more game marketing and better quality live service. The game marketing side of things is pretty obvious as how is anyone going to know about your game if you don't give them an opportunity to see it, right? The last gameplay trailer that we saw for Crimson Desert was way back in December of 2020 at the Game Awards, which is one of the best places for game advertising, showing that Pearl Abyss is certainly not afraid to step forward and put the game out there in competition with other big titles coming out this year, such as Halo Infinite or Battlefield 2042 to name a couple. Which begs the question, where has the marketing been since then? It seems as though Pearl Abyss is getting ready for a more rapid fire kind of approach to their marketing campaign, opting to not spread their resources too thin over the course of the year and instead build up their resources for lots of marketing during the final four month period before the game's release in winter of this year, 2021. The expansion of marketing resources to Europe and North America not only marks the shoring up of upcoming marketing campaigns, but it also gives hints for their target audience. Pearl Abyss has long said that they aim to market Crimson Desert towards a more Western audience with their theme of setting, the different aesthetic choices in the game, and to some extent even the game's foreshadowed narrative as well. With comparisons to games like God of War and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt that many, including myself, have made, it seems that Pearl Abyss really wants to capitalize on that striking similarity and find an audience full of players anxious for the next large open world single player experience. So far, the game is still slated for a winter 2021 release and multiple Korean news outlets have confirmed from Pearl Abyss that the targeted timeline is still the same with no projected delay, so we can put that to rest. Every article that I have checked and every communication that we have received from Pearl Abyss regarding the game's release has reiterated the winter 2021 timeline of Crimson Desert's global launch for PC and console, so nothing has changed up to this point so far. I'll just add this tidbit at the end here. In addition to the marketing side of things, the live service portion of the Europe and North American expansion should raise your eyebrows a little bit. It sounds to me like the live service that they're preparing is going to be for the multiplayer portion of the game, which could be anything from an MMO light to sort of a GTA style of multiplayer mode. I will get into that a bit later in the video, but just to throw that out there to give you something to look forward to. In other less Crimson Deserty news, Pearl Abyss has recently secured a license for publishing Black Desert Online Mobile in China, opening that particular game to the single largest mobile game market where it's supposedly the third most anticipated title for mobile in the region. So that's a very nice source of income for the game's developer. And speaking of income, Pearl Abyss surely needed a lot for the absolutely massive 3D motion capture studio that they are using to animate many actions for Crimson Desert. I covered this studio in my previous video on Crimson Desert discussing news before E3 and all the mounts announced for the game, so you can check that out in the top right if you want. But in terms of new information, it's not much, but it does emphasize Pearl Abyss's confidence in their new developing technology. In a recent article from Korean outlet The Economist, Kim Dae-il, chairman of Pearl Abyss, has stated that they are focused on developing AAA games that are loved by players for many years to come. Their newly developed proprietary engine is also focused on the following key items, and this is Google Translated, so bear with me if it's slightly off. Realizing the highest level of graphics, such as realistic texture, expression, and natural light effects. 
support high quality game quality, secured fast development speed, supporting platform compatibility, and finally supporting streaming and cloud services in line with 5G. Sounds to me like they are not looking to cut corners with the development of a great looking intense action combat game like Crimson Desert, and it also sounds like they're really aiming to give it a more fast paced update schedule similar to how they are doing with the weekly Black Desert Online updates. So we have that to look forward to at least. Now on to our next topic. When can we expect to hear more news from Pearl Abyss about Crimson Desert? Previously, I had stated that the Summer Game Fest and E3 were good times to watch for any reveals or news as it had been stated in a previous IR letter that more game content was going to be released before the end of the summer season. It seems as though the big reveals in question are meant to be presented in late August of this year as Gamescom seems to be the predicted point in time for some new type of gameplay trailer or teaser. Before we go any further, it is important to note that a reveal at Gamescom is not confirmed by Pearl Abyss themselves. The Gamescom trailer prediction primarily comes from the investing outlet Business Korea, who has long held that something related to Crimson Desert will be happening during Gamescom of this year from August 25th to August 27th. The words used in this context is an expected teaser, so it may be big or it might not, but you can bet it would be something substantially bigger than the crumbs that Crimson Desert's Twitter account about mounts or 3D motion capture technology that we've been getting recently, so have some high hopes for the end of August. Other than that, there really isn't much in terms of big events, but as more news about Crimson Desert comes out, you can bet I will be here to cover it all. Now we get into a bit of speculation about what we can expect from the game itself. There are a lot of questions I hear from different people that I want to address in this section about what I think will be in the game based on all the news and interviews that I've combed through, just to give a complete reminder for those that need to hear it. For starters, let's talk about the multiplayer. Oh, the multiplayer. What can you do in it? Can you co-op in the main story? Does the multiplayer portion even exist at all? Well, I can tell you now that there will indeed be a multiplayer mode for Crimson Desert. That much is confirmed 100% for the game. The question will be, what all can you do in the multiplayer mode that's different from the single player story mode? Well, so far we don't have very much confirmed information on the multiplayer mode, to be fair, beyond it purely just existing, but the main quote that you'll hear from Pearl Abyss is that users will be able to explore the world that you explore in the single player mode with others and craft their own stories. There is a confirmed character creation system that has been mentioned as well as PvP sieges and battles and such. Now, in terms of what I speculate there will be, I'm very much of the mind that it will be a sort of MMO light experience. If you've been following the history of Crimson Desert, you'd know that Crimson Desert was previously marketed as a new flagship MMORPG being developed by Pearl Abyss, but this genre marketing was scrapped by the time the game received its first gameplay trailer at the Game Awards in December of last year. Since then, the genre of the game has been redesignated to an open world action adventure with much more focus around the single player story mode portion of the game and a bigger focus on narrative above all else. This kind of put the multiplayer portion on the back burner so to speak, but here's what I think. Given how long it takes to develop MMOs historically among different game developers, I'm of the mind that there's no way that they would completely scrap the MMO portion of Crimson Desert. I do think that there will be some sort of MMO experience. I think that they are keeping it under wraps for right now to prevent player population drop in Black Desert Online. That's my conspiracy theory, but you're free to take it if you want to or not. It's all up to you. This is speculation at the end of the day. But here's what I really think. I think that the multiplayer will have a trading system. Maybe not a full-blown marketplace, but some way to exchange materials and goods back and forth between players. I think that life skills will be a decent portion of the content in the multiplayer section, similar to how Black Desert Online has it set up, and I think all of this will be used to funnel into the PvP Siege type of content. There's also been mention of dungeons and raids in the single player portion, which I cannot see not making it into the multiplayer portion as well. Overall, like I said earlier, I'm expecting a sort of MMO light type of experience for the multiplayer or at the very least a GTA style of open world multiplayer experience. With the game centered around the theme of groups of mercenaries vying for control of the game world, I can definitely see that playing a factor into guild style combat and the creation of different factions for players to compete amongst themselves with. Time will tell if this prediction holds up though. 
It is worth mentioning, however, that Pearl Abyss is quoted as saying that the multiplayer portion will be made into a brand new genre of all its own, so we'll see how that develops. In terms of single player, you've seen most of it in the Game Awards trailer. You'll be able to hunt down ferocious beasts, mythical creatures, and assassins apparently. You'll also be able to play as different characters in your band of mercenaries as seen in the trailer here with your orc friend and against other mercenary groups which should make for some interesting dialogue and political story elements. Of course, I did previously cover the extensive amount of mounts that are going to be in the game. Namely, the dragon that everyone's excited about should be a fun experience, although I have heard via various articles that the dragon will only be rideable in the story portion of the game, which makes sense for reasons I gave in my last video. Of course, the combat's looking fantastic, and one thing I've noticed is the sheer amount of finishing moves the game is going to offer, and it is here where I think that the 3D motion capture technology is really going to shine, as you can really get into the finest detail when you have a rig as massive and as accurate as Pearl Abyss has acquired. So I'm expecting the combat, and really the game in general, to be a massive spectacle, even more so than what we were shown in the initial Game Awards trailer. Now in terms of monetization, my hope is that the game is going to be a traditional buy-to-play model. $60 one and done would be my ideal way to monetize Crimson Desert. However, this is Pearl Abyss we're talking about, the same company that has viciously monetized their flagship MMO via various pay for heavy convenience and pay to fix unfun game design microtransactions, and I made up that last one, to such a degree that it's legendary. So really anything could happen here. If I were to make a guess, I imagine that the single player portion of the game will not be monetized other than the $60 price tag, but the multiplayer will have some kind of pay for convenience type stuff in it that may or may not ruin the experience. But again, this is all based on mine and many others' experience with Black Desert Online's cash shop. So it doesn't have to be this way for the open world action adventure, but let's just say my hopes aren't too high for it. At the end of the day, we do not and will not know Crimson Desert's business model until more information comes out. So be sure to stay up to date with its developments. And I know it sounds like I'm really excited for this game and that I'm a little cautious with the monetization, but really I'm just expressing my personal thoughts. So this may or may not actually happen once we get more information about how the game is going to be monetized and also what the multiplayer portion is going to be like. So take everything in that last section with a grain of salt. But that is going to do it for the video guys. Thank you all for watching all the way to this point and let me know what you'd like to see in Crimson Desert's multiplayer mode. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully we'll get some more reveals once Gamescom rolls around in late August, but until then or another article comes out, we will have to wait and see. Anyway, please be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from yours truly. I've been OSK, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.